Ghostlight, the second serial of Doctor Who's 26th and final season of the classic era, first broadcast in three parts from the 4th to the 18th of October 1989. And this is actually the last Seventh Doctor story that I needed to watch in order to complete the Seventh Doctor's run. Do I end it on a high note? Not really. I mean, I'm sure there are going to be some people who like this. I mean, when I've, when I've checked on social media, there are people who said that this is actually one of their favourites, some people. But for me, I just found this one a little overly confusing. Like, we're all going to be different. I mean, I personally liked stories like Delta and the Bannermen, and I thought Time and the Rani was all right. But this one I just felt was a little overly complicated. But anyway, I'll try and explain the story the best way I can, because as I said, I did find it a little complicated. So the TARDIS lands in 1881, and the Seventh Doctor, played by Sylvester McCoy and his companion Ace, venture out into what appears to be an old house. However, Ace soon realises that this house, which is populated by people, is actually Gabriel Chase. Like, Gabriel Chase, in for her in 1983, Gabriel Chase had been an old ruin. Like, nobody had lived in it for years, and she had eventually climbed over the walls and gone into Gabriel Chase on a dare. But feeling the kind of evil and being scared of, kind of all the evil that kind of still lurked there in the ruins, she had burned it to the ground. But the but they are now here in 1881, and as I said, the story does get a little bit complicated from there. The house is overseen by a man named Josiah Samuel Smith, voiced played by Ian Hogg, and they do meet various other characters along the way, including Red vs. Fen Cooper, played by Michael Cochrane, a Neanderthal butler that they have named Nimrod, played by Carl Forgione, Control, played by Sharon Juice, the Reverend Ernest Matthews, played by John Nettleton, Mrs. Pritchard and her daughter Gwendolyn, played by Sylvia Sims and Catherine Schlesinger. Inspector Mackenzie, played by Frank Windsor, and Light, played by John Hallam. And uh, I th what's eventually revealed is that thousands of years ago, a spaceship had come to Earth, and Light had made a record of all life on planet Earth, and had, in the process, also picked up a Neanderthal, which eventually became Nimrod. It was then put to sleep, and... Eventually, Josiah Samuel Smith took over. He had locked away control, gave up in the control room of the ship, and he now wants to eventually gain access to Queen Victoria so he can assassinate her and take over the British Empire. So it's up to the Doctor and Ace to find a way to stop him, and he has collected a load of kind of animals over the years and done experiments on animals and various things, including kidnapping a Victorian gentleman named Redvers Fen Cooper, who's a hunter, and trying to use him to gain an invitation to the Queen. Meanwhile, Control, played by Sharon Juice, has been kept locked away and is gradually has to learn how to be a respectable Victorian lady. Meanwhile, Reverend Ernest Matthews, played by John Nettleton, he vehemently kind of protests against evolution, especially from the likes of Charles Darwin. And he's kind of coming around to kind of protest against uh, Smith's theories. And yeah, as I said, the story does get a little bit complicated in places. And a lot of the time I was just thinking, what on earth is going on? Because they seem to switch from one storyline to another. Like, at first you think, okay, Smith is the bad guy, evidently. But then again, Cooper is prepared to kill anyone who stands in his way. And then the Reverend, I think, eventually gets turned into, well, partially de-evolved into a baboon. Or at least into a monkey state. And then Gwendolyn keeps wanting to send people to Java, which I don't know if it sense makes them gets them killed or just wants to put them in suspended animation. And uh, look, as I said, it does get a little confusing. And Light, when he is woken up, played by John Hallam, he seems particularly displeased because human humanity and planet Earth has evolved in the thousand years he has been asleep. So basically all of the records he did back a thousand years ago, they're now worthless because none of those original creatures exist, none of them are around, 
and basically everything has changed, meaning he'll have to start all over again and his work is effectively useless. To which the Doctor says, well, you can't fight against the evolution. So, yeah, I, I think this particular story of, 20, of season 26, I think this is probably the weakest story of season 26. Like, the others, I think, are all pretty good stories. Battlefield, Survival, and Curse of Fenric, they're some of the best. And just, yeah, this just didn't quite measure up for me. But, hey, if you if you like this story, please tell me down in the comments what I'm missing and why you enjoyed it. And you know what? We can have a decent discussion about it because we're all going to be different and we're, we're all different and our, one person's tastes, one person may like something, another person may not, and yeah. So now having watched and seen every TV story of the seventh Doctor's era, like I've, I've still got a lot to go with Big Finish. I mean, he, he had I I really love the Big Finish stories I listened to him, with him so far. But of the TV stories, he had twelve, and my ranking of them, personally, down the bottom I put this story, Ghostlight. Like I'm I'm sure other people like it. I just didn't particularly. So for me, that comes down the bottom. One spot up from that, and number 11, I would put The Happiness Patrol. Like, that that's one story where I think they tried to lean heavily into the kind of humour and comedy of the situation, and I just felt it just became a little bit overly cheesy. At least that's what I thought. At number 10, we've got Delta and the Bannermen. Now, that that's one story that I think did also have maybe one too many humorous elements, but actually, there were some parts of it I actually really liked, and they was supposedly testing out one particular companion with, I think her name was Sophie or something like that, but I actually felt that she was actually really nice, and if they had kept her around, I think she could have made a good companion. Ace hadn't come along, and Ace is one of my favourites. But anyway. At number nine, I would put Silver Nemesis. Like, this was supposedly the official 25th uh, anniversary storyline, and I just didn't... While the Cybermen are one of my favourite monsters, I just didn't think they would necessarily have done very well here, or at least they weren't done justice. But anyway, as I said, maybe you'll rank Silver Nemesis higher. Number eight, we've got Time and the Rani, and I know some people say they didn't like this story. I've watched it, I think, twice or three times now, and I actually don't mind it. I actually think it's pretty good. Anyway, at number seven, I would put The Greatest Show in the Galaxy, like... I think similar to The Happiness Patrol, they tried to lean more into the comedy side of things, and in some cases it worked, in some cases it didn't, but, you know what, that's, that's okay. And number six, I know people will disagree with me here, but I'd actually put Paradise Towers. Like, I watched that story through recently, and I actually thought it was pretty good. Like, I mean, and again, it captured, yes, the comedy side, but then it also managed to deal with some quite tense situations. At number five, I would put my personal favourite storyline of the Seven Doctors era, Dragonfire. Like, I know that some people don't like this story and think it's a bit too cheesy or like, but it's the introduction of Ace, and it does have one of my favourite scenes in Sylvester McCoy's era, which is when Mel leaves and he invites Ace aboard. Like, I, I love that scene, and you know what? It's one that I come back to, and I really enjoy Dragonfire. But the top four, I think, are fairly good, are the kind of best of the Seven Dots era. My number four would probably go to the final TV serial that we had before the cancellation, and that was Survival. I mean, yeah, I mean, you've got Anthony Ainley back as the master, you've got the Doctor and Ace, and you've got Cheetah people, what more can you want? I'd say my number three goes to Battlefield. I mean, once again, it's got some cheesy moments, but then you gotta love the Brigadier coming back, and they do manage to do some good stuff with it. At my number two, I would probably give it to a Remembrance of the Daleks. Like that, that is legitimately a good story. I do think that Davros's reveal does get a little kind of comedy in places, but at the same time. You're going back to Colville School, you've got Daleks, you've got Davros, and the Seventh Doctor, as well as an appearance from the unit. You know what? That's good. But I'd say the best Seventh Doctor story on TV, at least, was The Curse of Fenric. Like, when I watched it, I didn't necessarily think much of it, but looking back, yeah, it pr probably is the best. So, yeah. I'm sorry, I... Can't really go that much into more than this, otherwise this video will be 20 minutes long. But anyway, 
So there you go, there's my quick little review on Ghost Lights, which I said I found a little bit underwhelming, but there's my quick little review on Ghost Lights and my ranking of the entire 7th Doctor run. Now that means that of the classic era Doctors, I've now completed two of them. The 6th Doctor and the 7th Doctor. I guess I've also technically completed the 8th Doctor, but yeah. So, there we go. What will be my next classic story review? Well, we'll have to wait and see. Till next time, see ya.